Well, welcome to a very brief overview of video modeling. My name is Sean Smith. I'm part of the project here with Voice. And of course, what we're trying to do is trying to help with the idea of a practice generalization intervention that will allow an individual to facilitate that learning that they gained in the virtual reality on a specific social skill and practice and generalize it into their classroom. So let's start off with video modeling. Now, some of you might think video model, think Cindy Crawford. Yeah, I've shown my age. Cindy Crawford, awesome supermodel back in the 80s and 90s, but ha ha ha, the simple thing is video modeling is not a video and a model. Instead, video modeling is an evidence-based practice. We know it works. It's meant to teach new skills. It's an intervention that does that. And finally, it's tried to focus on increasing the desired behavior, like the specific social skill. And yes, it does involve a student watching a video. Of course, right? But video modeling is a little bit more than that. Video modeling itself allows us to display, illustrate, to, to teach appropriate behavior. Second, it allows the child to watch it time and time again. And finally, it allows the child and seeks to allow the child to apply what they learned in that video illustration. So it's an extension in a way of the virtual reality where the child's getting an introduction to uh, and a knowledge of the basic interaction. This is much more specific. So video modeling has four basic types. And we're going to take a look at the basic, then the self-modeling, then the video prompting, and finally the point of view. So let's go first, number one, basic video modeling. And it basically involves video, it involves a recording with a learner, and it involves the desired behavior or that social skill we're trying to teach an individual. But let's unpack it a little bit more. So what video modeling allows for, particularly, is this idea that, first of all, someone else is engaged in the basic video modeling with the desired behavior. So the individual that we're working with will watch it. It's in a specific setting. It's prior to a specific situation we're trying to enhance. And finally, the student is prompt um, the behavior, the social skill, what it is that we're trying to have them learn about, teach. So basically, it's like, uh, let's say good morning, and we're practicing how to interact with a peer. We see a video of that, and then of course, we'd look to generalize that into the classroom setting for that practice. Number two, video self-modeling involves recording of the actual learner engaged in that behavior. Now, there's a twofer going on here. And what I mean by that is the fact that we're looking to take the learner, okay, and we're trying to bring their, rep their, their repertoire, okay, of what we're trying to teach them into the recording. So first of all, the teacher would first teach the record, the, the, the skill, the, 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 what we were trying to enhance in terms of the social skill. The student can demonstrate that behavior, and then we record the individual engaged in that behavior. There's the twofer. So in a way, to introduce the behavior, we're teaching that, and then, of course, we're going to record it, and then, of course, the student can be able to watch it. Now, the benefits here is it reinforces what they've been introduced to, Secondly, it allows us to extend, it allows us to practice, it allows us to generalize what they've been reinforced and introduced to, particularly if it's something in that virtual reality. It further illustrates it and hopefully supports that generalization. So video self-modeling is overall, uh, the desired behavior is part of the learner's repertoire. Uh, the teacher can simply remind the student of the skill with the video self-modeling, and then of course engage the learner as they're actually performing that skill for that practice and generalization part, which we're really trying to reinforce. So we're halfway there. Number three, video prompting is exactly what you think it is. And that is the individual is prompted to, well, yeah, make a sandwich, but also prompted to in terms of how to start a conversation, prompted in terms of how to express oneself, etc., by step-by-step -step approach. So video prompting, first of all, begins with the teacher uh, breaking down how to complete the task. And in this image here, it's, let's say, a series of things of washing your hands, and it's prompting you to go along with it. So each step is broken down, let's say, like taking turns. Each step then is recorded in a short video, and then the learner watches each step. Now, by the way, it can be recorded all together, and we break it down into the steps. It doesn't matter, but the whole idea is when I watch it, I'm watching each step and then I engage in the actual behavior and then I watch the next step, engage in the behavior, watch the next step, engage in the behavior. So the best use here is there's a social skill or social interaction or any task that involves multiple steps. And so maybe it's, it's, it's uh, again, back to greeting an individual that involves multiple things. Maybe it's that expressive communication that involves multiple steps. So they see each, they look to apply each, they've chunked it, they've broken it down, 
And of course, they can pause the video, apply it, pause, apply it. So again, it's again for practice at initial introduction and of course that generalization. So they watch the clip, they engage what the video asks them to do, they complete it, and they continue on. Now the fourth is point of view. Now point of view video modeling is what exactly is what you think it is, and that is I'm seeing it from the view of myself. And that's very important for some individuals. They need to see that perspective. And so in this instance, that point of view, that perspective of what I'm going to see, be it, again, that social interaction, be it the social skill we're looking at, be it the target behavior, whatever it is we're focused on, it's going to be the point of view of the individual. Finally, there are seven steps to consider for implementation. Now, we have this as a job aid for you to download, but at least I'm going to mention them real briefly. We select the target. We break the skill down. We keep the video short. We also record the video to match the setting. Very important for practice and generalization. We edit the video. We do. We edit the video. Make sure it's actually it's got the audio going on. We want to add narration. It's very specific to the individual, their understanding. And finally, we present the task. Now, in addition to this very brief overview, we have a job aid to walk you through those seven steps. But we also have some illustrations of some video models that have been created by a variety of different teachers out there. So I hope this overview helped in getting you thinking about how, one, basics of video modeling work, two, the basics of video modeling, and three, how we can begin to practice and generalize uh, for the Marcuses of the world or the other case studies, of course, that we've created to facilitate the use of that social skill learned in the virtual reality into practice and generalization into the classroom setting I know you're all striving for. Hope this was helpful. Of course, we have several of these to go along in terms of evidence-based practices. And again, this was just simply video modeling.